Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start talking about the idea of a determinant of a matrix. So we've been talking about inverse matrices, and we have another calculation that we do specifically with square matrices. So we do inverses of square matrices also. And we have a calculation that's going to help tell us if a matrix is invertible or not. So we've been finding inverses and we want to know whether a matrix has an inverse or not, and the determinant is going to help us do that. The determinant has other uses and applications, but this is just one of the reasons that we like having this computation we can do that we call the determinant. So how the determinant relates to a matrix having an inverse is actually a topic I cover in a separate video. For now, we're just going to focus on how we find the determinant, but I want you to know that the reason we're talking about this at all is because it has a relationship with finding the inverse of a matrix. So we say the determinant of an n by n matrix A is a calculation resulting in a real value, and we denote that operation as determinant DET of A. So what the determinant does is dependent on the size of the matrix, but it follows a basic algorithm. So I'll start with a two by two case and then build up from there. So in the two by two case, our matrix is going to look like the first column being A, C, and the second column being B, D. And to take the determinant, we're going to replace whatever brackets we're using for the matrix with these vertical bars that lets us know that we're computing the determinant. And then we're going to do this multiplying across and subtracting. So we're going to do A times D minus B times C. And whatever this value is, is our determinant. Okay, then in the three by three matrix case, let's say we have our matrix A and I'll have all of the elements be A with some index. Then what we do for the determinant of A is that we start with A11, so that first position in the matrix, and then we're gonna take the determinant of the bottom portion of the matrix. So we kind of cross out the row in the column that A11 is in, and then we take the determinant with the resulting other parts. Then we subtract A12, so we subtract the next element, and we're going to cross out the row and column where A12 is, and then take the determinant of the values that we have left over. So we're gonna do the determinant A21, A31, and A23, A33. Then we add A13, so that third position in the first row, and we're going to cross out the row and column it's in and take the determinant of the remaining other parts. So A21, A31, and A22, A32. So at this point, we're just defining the algorithm. It might seem sort of weird that we're doing it this way, but this is just a special computation we can do and, we, and it's going to give us a value that has a lot of information in it. So, all right, we have this set up and then we have these three smaller two by two determinants to compute. So the first one, we do A11 multiplied by A22, A33 minus A23, A32. So hopefully you can follow along. Me saying all these numbers isn't very interesting. Then we subtract A12 multiplied by A21, A33 minus A23, A31. All right, then we add A13 and we do this final determinant. So A21, A32 minus A22, A31. And this value here would be our determinant of a three by three matrix. So if you've done cross products before, this should look slightly familiar because we use this when computing the cross product when we're talking about vectors. So if you've done that recently or you remember doing that process, this is going to be the same thing, but now we're just coming at it from the matrix perspective rather than coming at it from the vector calculus perspective. Okay, so then we can take this algorithm and extend it out to an n by n matrix. So we're going to follow a very similar process. I'm going to start with A11. We'll do A11 times the determinant of what's remaining when we cross out the row in the column. So we're doing the determinant of the smaller matrix, A22, all the way through ANN. So this determinant might involve a lot more in it. There might be a lot of different determinants to do since this could be fairly large, but this is the algorithm we follow. Okay, then we'll subtract A12 that gets multiplied by the determinant of the resulting terms when we cross out the row in the column. So this one is A21 
all the way through A and N. Then we would continue this process across the first row. So we would add the next term. So A13, we'd do the determinant. We'd subtract the next one, A14. And we'd do this alternating adding and subtracting until we get to the final term in the row. So it might be adding or subtracting, depending on if the N, the dimension, is even or odd. But we'll be adding or subtracting the last term, A1N, and that gets multiplied by the determinant of the remaining terms. So A21 all the way through A and N minus one. So this is the overall determinant algorithm and we would repeat it as many times as we needed to do all of these determinants within the determinant. I also wanna mention that the version of the formula I've given you here goes across the first row. So it starts with A11 and goes all the way through A1N, does the first row you can actually pick any row or column and do the formula the same way. It's really not too important for us at this stage to talk about that, so I'm not going to dwell on it or spend too much time talking about it, but I just want you to know that this formula is defined for any row or column. I'm just choosing to do the first row as the one we kind of expand across. If you're interested, that process is called cofactor expansion, and you could look into it if you want. Lastly, I just want to mention that this algorithm, you can kind of see how it's going to get complicated really fast, and so thankfully we have technology that can help us find determinants. Okay, so we have our algorithm for finding the determinant. Now let's do some examples. So let's find the determinants of the matrices A and B, where A is a 2 by 2 matrix with columns 10, 5, and negative 3, 1. And a B is a 3 by 3 matrix with columns 6, 1, 0, 3, negative 2, 4, and 8, 1, negative 1. So let's start with A and we're going to find the determinant. So the determinant of A takes AD minus BC. So for us, that's 10 times 1 minus negative 3 times 5. And then we just need to simplify. So I'm getting 10 plus 15, which is 25. And that's the whole thing. So we found the determinant of A just by doing this quick computation. Okay, let's do the next problem now. Let's do matrix B. So to find the determinant of B, we're going to start in the first row and do smaller determinants going across that first row. So I'll start with six. I'm going to cross out the row in the column it's in and then do the determinant of the remaining terms. So I'm doing the determinant of the matrix made by negative 2, 4, and 1, negative 1. Then I'm going to subtract 3 times the determinant, where here we have left over 1, 0, and 1, negative 1. Then I'll add 8 and do the determinant of 1, 0, negative 2, 4. So now I have these three little mini 2 by 2 determinant problems to do within my larger determinant. So I'm doing six, then I have negative two times negative one minus four times one. Then I subtract three times one times negative one minus one times zero. Then I add eight times one times four minus negative two times zero. And now we just simplify. So I'm getting six times two minus four, then minus three times negative one minus zero, plus eight times four minus zero, and we just keep going. So six times negative two, minus three times negative one, plus eight times four. So that's negative 12 plus three plus 32, which results in 23. So our determinant of the matrix B is 23. At this point, these numbers shouldn't mean that much to you. So we got 25 and 23 as our two determinants. We'll talk in the next video about what we're sometimes looking for to talk about whether a matrix is invertible or not. But for right now, just think of this as an additional computation that we can do with the matrix. Okay, so we've done our two examples. Just to close out the video, I wanna talk about some alternate things you can do to check your answers for the determinants or to do these in a different way. So specifically, let's check with this three by three case. There's lots of computations here, so I think it's nice to be able to do it with technology. You can use Wolfram Alpha or a calculator or any other tool that you have that you've been using. They usually have a way to compute the determinant if it's able to do matrix math. So here I'll type in DET and then type my matrix in. 
you can see the vertical bars for the determinant that it's computing, and it tells me that the result is 23, which is great. That's the answer we got too. So you can use technology to do this determinant or to check your answer. Also, as I mentioned before, if you've learned cross products with vectors, like in a vector calculus class, you might have seen a shortcut method for doing three by three matrix determinants. I'm going to review that really quick just to maybe jog your memory or to show it to you for the first time if you haven't seen it. So we're just going to repeat our three by three example, but with this other method. So if I have my determinant that I'm trying to compute, what we can do is we can take the first two columns and write them next to the matrix. So we write out the columns that we have in our three by three matrix, and then we're going to add two more columns that come from our first two. So I'm adding that six, one, zero, and three, negative two, four to my list. Then to do this shortcut, what I'm going to do is multiply down the diagonals going kind of from left to right, and then I'll subtract what happens when I multiply down the diagonals going sort of from right to left. So what this looks like is six times negative two times negative one, plus three times one times zero, plus eight times one times four. So those are my down the diagonals going from left to right. Then we're going to subtract off all the results going in the other direction. So I do three times one times negative one, minus six times one times four, minus eight times negative two times zero. Then when we do this computation, we should also get 23, which was our answer to the problem when we did the determinant the other way. So here I'm seeing that I get 12 plus zero plus 32. And then my diagonals going the other directions are giving me plus three minus 24 minus zero. Then putting this all together, I'm getting 23 as my solution. Okay, so this is a shortcut that you can do for three by three matrix determinants. You do not need to do this. I just wanna mention it to you in case you've seen it before or in case you like it better, or if this is just something you wanna try when you're doing your determinant problems. So that's about it with computing determinants. In the next video, we'll talk about how determinants relate to whether or not a matrix has an inverse. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.